Welcome to Cars in Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis Hyundai in Kia Cars. And as you saw from today's thumbnail, I have 2025 Kia Carnival Hybrid. For the first time ever, Kia gave us the hybrid on Carnival. And you see one right here. You will see a ton of Carnival throughout the test drive today. It is one of the best selling cars in its category. Before I get into today's test drive video too much, I'd like to let you know that there is a thorough review of this Kia Carnival, the facelift inside out on my channel. So please Please feel free to check that out. I'd like to focus on the drive itself with this Kia Carnival Hybrid. A lot of people have been crying, dying about this hybrid because it was really overdue. It was just about time that Kia gives us one. Hyundai Motor Group cars overall, they've been making great hybrids thus far. They have accumulated so much data, information, technique, technologies that can be implied on cars. We just never got it on this Kia Carnival, but finally got it. For those of you guys who need a big size family car, I bet you have considered about either Palisade or Carnival. Maybe that's just me, but that is the torn decision that I currently have. Currently, my daily driver is a Kia Seltos. The drive sensation I get inside this Kia Carnival facelift is just unmatchable. It is just completely different. Cozy inside, the ride-wise, the interior-wise, the list just goes on and on. This spacious interior can never be replaced with whichever the technology, the latest high tech that you can bring because it is the physical thing. A car is either big or small. There is no adaptive system technology that can make the car larger and smaller. Well, at least at least for now, right? This behemoth large size family vehicle that you can get all the way up to a nine seater configuration. It is just one of a kind that I can tell you for a certain. FYI, the test driver I have is currently same combination as the car that I test drove before. It has the captain seats on the second row seats, which means it is a seven seater Kia Carnival. Well, speaking of that second row seat, the captain seats, it gets the crazy massage done, which are the seats that we have seen on Kia EV9 before. Speaking of that, there are actually a lot of techs put behind this Kia Carnival that trickle down from Kia EV9. The massage seat that I just told you about to get started, drawer that you can pull from the second row seat, it was also first found on Kia EV9. There are a few more upgrades, if you will, that this Kia Carnival facelift has gotten. That is, you can actually open the second row sunroof and it's not even a tiny small sunroof that we used to see it is a legit i almost want to say it well it is a panoramic sunroof you can actually open up the second row sunroof i already see kids children <laughs> loving it however there are few things that would have been certainly nice if it was um borrowed from ev9 which is the column type shifter attached to the steering wheel this hybrid carnival is lacking because that gives us a far more room in the middle, the center console, because this whole middle portion, this section you see underneath is actually all covered up. However, also there are upgrades that was not seen before. There is now a lesser use of piano black throughout the interior, especially where there are frequent fingerprint smudges that gets on, i.e. the some center console part that I just told you about. So this portion used to be the high gloss, the piano black, if if you will cup holders have now gotten the matte plastic just the typical plastic portion so now it's completely worry free relatively compared to the gloss finish that we used to have on a preface lift model there no longer is the lid in the center console so you can wireless charge your phone just like that on a preface lift model that portion was just open 24 7 because of a lack of storage maybe Kia designers saw that so they got rid of that and turned that into a whole space that you can use 24 7. it's large enough as you can see i have iphone 14 pro max with covers around it and also on the left is extra storage that you can put your stuff in the middle all of these i have gone through in my previous video so please refer to that so all of this interior stuff i would really appreciate if you could refer to the previous video that i have put in the cards as well as pinned comment and description below this inside the interior is essentially the same as the v6 
1975 naturally aspirated engine model that I have test driven, except for that EV charging monitor and the display that we get, including the tachometer. So of course we never see that on a petrol gasoline model <laughs> for the obvious reason. I have that the electric mode. It is the same thing that we have been seeing throughout the Hyundai Motor Group vehicle. And I actually have recently test driven Hyundai all new Santa Fe hybrid. So I will be making a lot of reference to that in this video as well. Ergo motion seat, you can find the buttons on the left right next to the two memory seat buttons. You can tap on that three times to get the whole body ergo motion seat. This is something that I've seen on Genesis level. However, it trickled down to Gia Carnival and even within Hyundai cars, Santa Fe gets it. It is just a driver at the moment for your information. However, a few cars do get the relaxation seat mode on the passenger seat, but you don't really need all that in this Gia Carnival because you just got a massive room inside the vehicle. No other cars can do. And whenever I get the chance, I would love to sit in that second row seat and deliver you what it feels like. But I have done so in previous video. It is just as comfortable as the driver and the first row seats. The only difference is that, that the second row seats are physically in the second row or more like in the middle of the vehicle due to the nature being, right? First of all, the residual shocks of going over a speed bump and also just driving casually on the roads is different. The first row seats are much closer to the front wheels so just like the speed bump that i go over it feels different from the first row seat to that of the second row seat but i want to say that it just feels different because we are just so used to sitting closer to the front wheel as a driver the third row seats actually sit right on top of the real wheel it is just inevitable with any car that has third row seats so it is one of those on um, physical limitations however the cabin room size in terms of the third row seat once again unmatched there is no other car that can beat the third row seat experience of the carnivals so the third row seats are all folded as you can see just check out the massive panoramic sunroof that i told you about so when you fold the third row seats it's almost like a pickup truck kind of a cargo space that we get on the third row seats third row seats are even a dive down seat so the seats are actually plunged right underneath the platform so it still provides the flat trunk space even when the seats are folded meaning when you actually pull them up now there is the space which you can also utilize as a storage space now you will get this car according to your needs of the seat configuration uh, your daily use how this car would suit your family the number of family members would play a key role when it comes to choosing the type of the vehicle seat configuration the overall experience that you get as a drive itself from the hybrid would still relatively be the same the only difference is actually very dependent on how many people you have inside the vehicle. I mean, it only makes sense if you do the calculation. More people inside the car, heavier it is, the more load that this car gets. Therefore, the driving experience you get driving this car around just by yourself in a driver's seat is completely different when you have the car loaded with passengers inside and even maybe luggages inside. Do keep that in mind. When you are driving alone, there, there is no issue with the power and also stopping the vehicle. FYI, the rear rotors are now the V-disc, uh, ventilated discs, so which has also been upgraded. However, when the vehicle gets loaded up, do understand the vehicle dynamics completely change when you have people stuff inside the vehicle. Um, I will tell you about my MPG, but I also will show you the accumulated um, trip, real world experience of what this car is like. The way the EV motor and the engines engage are just flawless. You can't really feel a thing unless you absolutely concentrate on it. The only obvious time where you can feel the car is hybrid is when you actually stop the vehicle because now it's in the EV mode, which means there is no noise, there is no engine running whatsoever, no vibration as far as the ice, the engine goes. You get the same vibe sensation as you would in an EV when you have the car stopped at a red light. When you operate this vehicle in slow speed, so up to a certain point, the it will only use the EV mode, i.e. the car will only use the motor. You can see it real time when the car needs to have the engine going because it's a, a little 
little bit of an uphill right now. However, it's really, really difficult for you to pinpoint and notice and feel a little bit of acceleration. And of course, this is the obvious time you feel the car using the engine and the power is being delivered through the engine and the transmission. <laughs> In the EV mode, you can also set and change the level of the region brake for different levels. You can set it to auto by pulling right pedal shifter for a few seconds, the car will go into the auto mode and using the left and right pedal shifters, you can set it from zero to level three. So you get four choices of different EV or region brake modes i've tested out on this vehicle as well but also much longer with santa fe hybrid each levels actually do have very different settings and so you will definitely see the differences between the region brakes level if you or your passengers are not a big fan of the motors kind of charging up using the region brake you can always loosen it up and the other way around to get that best mpg possible so right there is also the digital center mirror that a lot of recent Hyundai Motor Group cars are getting. I have a gigantic truck right behind me, so that's the only thing I see. I say it every single time I see the digital center mirror, that is, it's not just a rear view mirror turned digital, but it provides, it has a wide lens, so it gives you a wider view, but also when you have people inside and car loaded with full of luggage inside, you cannot see it through the rear view, right? because it's obstructed, but that is all gone. You don't have to worry about it at all with the digital center mirror because it's actually attached right next to the third brake light on the rear. Therefore, it provides you the visibility 24 seven. Under a poor raining condition, it's sometimes the water droplet would actually cover the digital center mirror sometimes, but it will get either blown away or dry it out when you drive around. So not big thing to worry about. And it's also coated on the outside, of course. So when you pour the water on, the droplet wouldn't really stay on there for a long time. You might be curious about the motor's power when you put the car on an uphill. Don't worry about it. This car gives you 245 horsepower all together. And that is the strongest hybrid motor that has been implemented on Hyundai Motor Group thus far. It just is impossible for me to drop the battery down to the 50%. It is actively using and charging the battery and throughout the course of the test drive, including this Carnival and Santa Fe Hybrid that I have test driven, I was never able to witness the battery go below 50%. It is actively charging the battery and also is very actively using the battery. There is no info that you can pull about the battery and the motor from the tachometer however and just look at that just running on the electric mode and it's even charging right now because it's a downhill and the car is doing all of that on its own beautiful so the 360 view cam that is associated with this Kia Carnival you can see it right there and you can see it real time. I actually got a subscriber telling me that uh, that is not something that you can get from the United States. We can actually have the display running as you drive around and it will just stay on there for forever, <laughs> just like that. So I can have the 360 view cam as well as the rear view. I find that to be a awesome feature to have whenever I do a POV test drive. So that is also a facelifted Gia Seltos. That is kind of a penetrating design on Gia now, right? So we have a similar design on the rear for this Gia Carnival facelift, including the front. And honestly speaking, I really find it difficult for me to differentiate the facelifted Gia a Sorrento to that of the facelift Carnival now as far as the front looks are concerned. If you get a quick glance of each car, unless they're standing right one another, I bet you will have a difficulty differentiating the two. I guess that is the family look of Gia now, which started from the tiger face now into a tiger mask and also digital tiger mask when it comes to the EVs such as EV6 and EV9. I believe that Gia has completed their family look in terms of the front and also the rear when it comes to these uh, ladies cars. What are your thoughts about this family look that Kia is um, recently pursuing? Let me know in the comment below. I'm really curious about how the Sportage facelift would come out to be. What are your thoughts about the design of the Kia Carnival, this facelift, by the way? In Korea, Kia is actually known to be the designer.
design Gia. <laughs> and I actually do a general consensus on that, uh, going over my comments and communicating with my viewers and subscribers. Again, but what, floor it, let's floor it. So it takes a long time for the car to pick up the speed. Again, it's not a car that you're going to race, but do keep that in mind that the car will find a sweet spot right away. And it is very, very gentle and smooth. Great time to test out some HDA. This Kia Carnival facelift hybrid also comes with HDA2, latest HDA from Hyundai Motor Group family. It even clears some of the highway exit that you just have like an oval exit. I've done it with all new Hyundai Santa Fe, no problem. Inserting the footage right now, if I don't come across a chance, it, it's just great. The only thing that this car is lacking is what's called HOD, which stands for hands-on detection. You can wrap around the steering wheel, which the car will never ask you to hold on to the steering wheel. However, this is still the good old torque feedback basis cars. You will need to input a torque feedback into the steering wheel every now and then. It is something that you can live with. It's not all that different when you are driving the cars in cities around. However, that is a great tech to have if you go on a long distance drive a lot. On a pre lift model, the only car that's got the best suspension was what's called high limousine. That is the highest trim here in Korea that got the boosted ceiling. So it's carved inside with the ceiling covers on top, allowing the kids and children to walk around inside the vehicle, which they absolutely love. Of course, when the car is stationary, that vehicle actually had a suspension that is different from the other trims and models. However, come this facelift, that very suspension is now implemented throughout the all trims. So regardless, of the trim model you get, you get the best suspension that Gia Carnival has got to offer. And I can feel that throughout the test drive. As you can probably see from how cozy the car, how gentle, how smooth the car is running, the official MPG on this Gia Carnival facelift is actually 14 kilometers. Depending on your driving style, I bet you can easily milk much higher MPG than what's stated, what's put behind the emotion. But you can actually feel that immediately the moment you test drive the hybrid so try go over a lot of speed bumps you will feel that immediately not just the pitching which is the vertical the front and rear movement of a vehicle the car also utilizes that motor and the technology to deliver the torque vectoring putting the different torque on each wheel whenever necessary in order to help with the understeer and oversteer and also when you make a snap steering wheel a lot of drivers actually fail to counter input the feedback to the, the opposing direction in order for the car to get the right balance but that emotion comes in play and actually gives you that additional feedback additional steering wheel input to get that balance you need that way further providing you the safety further securing you from a dangerous position and situations the car will also use the similar technology to keep the car in balance when you get struck by a strong wind from the sides that is one of the weakest point when it comes to the large mpvs and suvs if you get the wind from the sides the car is going to to swerve a lot however with the hybrid the motor system aids that and will give you better balance and driving pleasure all throughout so let me wrap up today's video by saying that when it comes to Gia Carnival Hybrid facelift, it's not just about the good MPG that you get, that's EV experience that you get. That is why my personal preference is all leaned towards the hybrids. It doesn't matter Carnival or anything else. So that's it for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and like Cars in Korea if you did. Once again, I did not go over about the exterior and interior first. <laughs> due to lack of time i always have with this videos but i have a very thorough review inside out of the vehicle on my channel with the v6 na model so feel free to check that out or please check that video out and i will see you in the next video and we got the hybrid carnival now what's next phev perhaps what are your thoughts about it drop in the comment below i'll see you in the next video bye bye
A few techs worth mentioning is first and foremost, Kia Carnival facelift gets 12.3 inch dual monitors left and right, which is called CCNC, Connected Car Navigation Cockpit, which means it is OTA over the air updates backed up. That means you don't have to visit dealerships in order to get the latest software. You can actually get it directly on your car. You don't have to do anything. Probably every now and then the car will ask if you like the latest upgrades and just tap on yes and then it will tell you estimated time. Then you can have the car up to date freshest. You get wireless Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. And that is of course a beautiful thing to have. And it also has the parking assist where you can pull the vehicle forward and backwards. A huge contribution counting in the fact that the Carnival is a big size car. So it allows you to park in spaces that you would have never thought about, dreamed about if it wasn't for that feature. And you can see very clear 360 view cams also supported by all of the alarms and alerts so you can just park the car the cars on the rear the poles on the front and things on the sides as well just like that how convenient is that love that feature all right i really gotta go that's it i'll see you in the next video bye bye